Tubi is a fertile ground for all kinds of horror. Yes, there's a lot of crap to sift through, but occasionally you'll stumble upon something truly special. That's exactly what happened when I checked out the strange little movie called Night of Fear, and it struck me so much that I felt I had to give it a good old retro reviewing. So here goes. Welcome back to M.L. Miller Frights. I'm M.L. Miller. Before we begin, please do me a favor and punch that like button down below. Share this video with all of your social media addicted pals. Click subscribe to this channel and ring that bell for notifications. Night of Fear was released in 1973. It's streaming on Tubi. It's directed and written by Terry Bork. After a woman on horseback is captured by a strange loner with a strange love for rats, cats, and taxidermy, another woman wrecks her car and finds herself stalked and tormented by the same man. Originally meant to be a pilot for an Australian TV series called Fright, once the censors got a gander at Terry Bork's Night of Fear, they put the kibosh on its release quickly, leaving the filmmaker no choice but to release the 53-minute film as a feature in drive-ins. But despite its short runtime, Night of Fear proves to be one potent and disturbing little gem. Some tout Night of Fear as the first Australian horror film, but others debate that it isn't a film due to its short runtime. However you categorize it, Night of Fear is bare-bones horror at its best. There's barely a plot, or rather, it's such an utterly simple plot, it's hardly worth mentioning. But what it lacks in narrative, it makes up in capturing feelings of terror and despair in ways few other films could dream to accomplish. There's a dank and grungy feel to every aspect of Night of Fear that can only be compared to another film that was released a year after this one and caused such a rumble in the horror genre that it's still felt today. I'm talking about the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. From set designs to the sheer raw emotion exhibited, Night of Fear and the Texas Chainsaw Massacre feel like kissing cousins. But instead of the sitting and getting to know you time TCM took to allow us to meet the ill-fated teens, Night of Fear simply throws one woman into the sights of a madman and follows her for 50 solid minutes. It's impressive that Night of Fear makes every minute count in terms of heightening the fear of the unknown as behind every tree or blade of uncut grass may lie a killer. None of the characters in Night of Fear have names. There's no backstory needed. This is a film that occurs exactly in the moment. It's a primal dash for survival between hunter and prey, and Bork milks every scene for tension, giving very few moments of downtime. Because so little is known about the characters, the film feels almost dreamlike as there is no dialogue to be heard in the entire film. There might be a report from a radio or some newspaper clippings that might hint of some kind of backstory, but for the most part, Night of Fear is a reptile brain movie focused on the fight or flight reflex one gets when your life's on the line. But Bork doesn't really allow you the opportunity to wonder about the whys and the hows. If he's not framing scenes in interesting and creative ways, he's inundating the viewer with extreme close-ups or wonderfully detailed interiors of the stalker's home, which feels like it was filmed on the same set as Texas Chainsaw Massacre, with all sorts of nooks, crannies, curtained-off rooms, and trap doors rigged to drive the stalker's victims out of their minds. Adding to the mayhem is a musical score that is made from all sorts of strange clangs, clatters, bashes, and a cacophony of other odd sounds that will put you utterly on edge for the entire time. Bork captures the intensity and feeling of this woman in peril so succinctly through unconventional edits, strange sounds, and a sheer lack of dialogue. This is literally one night of fear, and you will experience it in such an intimate and all-too-real way, it's definitely going to leave you gasping for air and maybe in need of a shower afterwards. It's almost too real sometimes. Violence in real life rarely has an origin story, and that seems to be one of the points Bork is trying to drive home. Disturbing? Yes siree. This is one of those old grindhousers that makes you wonder how they got away with the things that they delve into. Severed horse heads on posts, cats that are fed raw meat, rats crawling all over. It's the kind of stuff that will definitely disturb you now, 
so I can only imagine how much it terrified audiences back then. Seeing how horrifyingly effective Night of Fear is, it makes me wonder what was planned for the rest of the installments of this planned television series. Bork only really made two other horror movies, In of the Damned and Lady Stay Dead, both of which I'll be trying to watch soon, you bet your sweet pippy I will. Though it's as simple as it comes, there's something so appealing to Night of Fear in that it does so much with so little. It trims off all that fat that makes your mind wander in other movies and simply offers up the true and unrelenting horror in its purest form. Any self-respecting horror fan deserves to experience this truly unique shocker from down under. And I'll be reporting back soon after I've checked out Bork's In of the Damned and Lady Stay Dead. You can count on it. Have you seen Night of Fear? If you have, let me know what you thought about it down in the comments. Stuck inside your reality